once again. Merry Christmas. It was great to see so many of you here last night, and a lot of you uh, were not here last night. Welcome to Christmas time. Welcome to our family Christmas. We're deliberately unplugged and simple and intimate today. And if you're joining online, welcome to you as well. We've been going through a series called Handel's Messiah as, as we've been going through this whole Advent season. We've looked at the lyrics to arguably this, uh, maybe the greatest piece of music that's ever been written. I don't know of a better piece. Quite frankly, I don't know of a longer piece. I, I know there are some longer pieces out there. But if you, if you go to a live performance, how many of you have been to a live performance of Handel's Messiah? So you get a little booklet, and the booklet includes all these notes and I was so surprised years ago when I realized all the notes, all the lyrics were just taken right from Scripture. It's just nothing more than this huge blast of Scripture, of God's Word, of God's truth. So we've been going through part one of Handel's Messiah, and we're going to do part two and part three next year around Easter time because parts two and three speak about the Easter time events and actually the, the post Easter events. And some really, really cool stuff. So come back at Easter. Okay, come back before Easter. <laughs> as we continue Handel's Messiah. But today we're going to look at two songs on the day that relate to the birthday of Jesus. The first one is Rejoice Greatly, O Daughter of Zion. Like much of part one, the text is from the ancient prophet Zechariah. And as you just heard read a moment ago, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. How many of you would like to see peace to the nations today? He will rule, his rule will extend from sea to shining sea. No, it doesn't say that. Sea to sea, just seeing if you're awake. And from the river to the ends of the earth. Here's just a little sample of what Handel did with this scripture. <laughs> translation, if, if you will. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. 
rejoice, 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 Got my little dance section over here too, <laughs> grooving out. Rejoice! Is there enough rejoicing in our world these days? Definitely not. In the context, the prophet Zechariah speaking prophetically about the coming Messiah hundreds of years later, saying that your king is going to come. Speaking to the Jewish people, the Israelites, your king is coming. Right now, you're oppressed, but someday your king is going to come, a deliverer to release you from bondage, to bring hope and victory and life and peace. And it says he's going to come lowly and riding on a donkey. What does that mean? Well, as many of you know, this was a prophetic word that was fulfilled on Palm Sunday, Matthew, the tax collector, recorded the following. He said, as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead. Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with a colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks me what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. By the way, he's going to come back. But it's not going to be a donkey. It's going to be a white horse. He's going to kick some booty. Okay, so as I've said before, one of the most amazing things about Scripture and one of the reasons why I have so much faith and confidence in these books is that they've been proven historically credible, for one thing. Archaeology keeps uncovering more and more things to back it up. There's a consistency 66 books written over hundreds of years, over multiple continents, different languages, all the same contiguous message. But one of the, maybe the most striking things has to do with messianic prophecy. Prophecy written hundreds of years before Jesus that was uniquely fulfilled in Jesus. In fact, I, I did a little research and I found this. There are more than 300 messianic prophecies that Jesus uniquely fulfilled including where he was born and this thing with the donkey and just some bizarre things that you, there's just no way you could, you could fabricate it, you could try to become that person. I mean, we don't get to choose where we're born. According to Christianity.com, the chances of one person fulfilling eight of these 300 and some prophecies, okay, just, just for one person to fulfill eight of them are one in a hundred... Thousand, hundred thousand, million, billion, hundred trillion to fulfill eight of the three hundred some prophecies. For one person to fulfill eight is about one in a hundred trillion. The odds of fulfilling forty-eight of the three hundred plus would be one in ten to the hundred and fifty-seventh power. This is our God. 
Now, before we look at our final song for this part of Handel's Messiah, I want to jump back to the Zechariah passage. And it ends this. It says, His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. We find ourselves today between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. We're in this awkward in-between space. And it's kind of neat because we can look back at the first coming and see, wow, he fulfilled all these prophecies about 2,000 years ago. But there are a lot of fulfilled, unfulfilled prophecies that we're still awaiting today. And he's coming back soon. I don't know when. We're a day closer than we were yesterday. In this awkward in-between time, We've been given now, in addition to fulfilled prophecy, we have God's holy scriptures that we can read and we can study. We've been given the Holy Spirit, the power of God to live inside of us, to transform us to become more and more like Jesus. See, as much as our faith is historic, it's not merely historic. It's alive and well in the 21st century. And no matter whether it's popular or not, I can tell you it is still changing lives. It is still powerful and effective that God is on the move. And we've seen that throughout this church in 2022. It's kind of weird to think this is our last gathering of 2022. Next week is next year. (laughs) But it's been so exciting to see changed lives, to to bear witness to people sharing their stories on stage, to, to have a front row seat. Our staff, we're so blessed. We get the front row seat to see God at work in some stories that are just... Well, they're just, in some cases, too sensitive or, or too new in development to share publicly. But we see God on the move. We see God at work. And yes, while we anticipate his return, he's at work today. And even on his birthday in 2022, God is alive. Jesus is alive and active and moving. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's praying and interceding for you and for me. As much as I, I, I love my family, I adore my wife, we're nuts about our grandkids. There's only one thing that I get more excited about than, than my family that I get to spend time with today in central Michigan as soon as this is over. <clears throat> Short sermon today, Pastor. Um, and that's Jesus. I love Jesus. Because Jesus loves me and Jesus loves you. And this whole story, the baby, the shepherds, the the wise men, the gifts, the whole thing is all about God showing his love for you. And he went to extreme lengths to show his love for you. To come and live 33 years, die and rise from the dead. And again, we're going to finish the story at Easter time. You can read it in the meantime, by the way. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all give some really, really wonderful accounts. But I'm just wondering, as we anticipate this great day for the return of Christ, are you ready? Jesus is coming back. Judgment Day is coming for all of us. Are you ready? A few weeks ago, we saw how Judgment Day is coming, and we'll either bear the penalty for our sins or we'll let Jesus pay the penalty for all of our failures and flaws. But it requires us not only believing some historical facts. What Jesus is looking for is men and women that are surrendered to him. What are you getting Jesus for his birthday today? He doesn't want anything from Walmart. He just wants your heart. He wants you. I hope you enjoy this time together. I hope, hope you go tell your friends, oh, we went to Christmas service and it was, we sang songs and it was wonderful. But I hope you really get away from this morning that Jesus wants your heart. He gave everything he had for you, even his very life. And he's inviting you. He's saying, come and see. He's inviting you to follow him. And let me tell you, I've tried to do some life my own way doesn't get me in really good places. And surrendering to Christ does not make life easy. It doesn't mean it's always happy, happy, happy. But I can tell you, there is no greater joy, there's no greater peace, there's no greater satisfaction than a life fully surrendered to Jesus. 
What he wants for his birthday today is you. The most famous verse in the whole Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, whoever follows him, shall not perish but have eternal life. God gave. The Father gave the Son, Jesus. Jesus gave his life. When he left earth after he rose from the dead, he sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. So I told you, again, there's actually three parts to Handel's Messiah. The first part dealing with the advent, the coming, the arrival of Jesus. And parts two and three dealing with the death, the resurrection, the ascension into heaven, and then the events of the future. Our final song today, the last song of 2022 for First Alliance Church. Speaks not of 2,000 years ago or even the present, but it actually speaks of the future. And this would probably be best done at Easter time. And we will do this again at Easter time. But I couldn't think of a better way for us to kind of wrap up this year than with one particular song and one particular passage. The text comes from the book of Revelation where John the Apostle records a vision that he had from the Lord. As I heard, and I heard as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thunderings saying, Alleluia for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Have you ever heard the sound of many waters? rushing water, maybe a, a lake. My favorite sound of water is in the ocean, the, the roaring ocean. I still have memories of, of my bride at, at, in an ocean and kind of body surfing these big waves that came in and just, just the power. I, I've never been surfing. It's on my bucket list. I want to go surfing someday. The power of mighty waves and the sounds and the sounds of mighty thunderings, we've heard that. We've heard thunder, the shake in the ground. It's exciting. This is a picture of the coming king, the return of the king. The word alleluia or hallelujah, however you want to say it, means praise the Lord. And it's, it's the same in multiple languages. Praise the Lord. I've been in, in big crowds. I've never heard a sound quite like this. I've been at loud concerts. I've, I've never heard a sound. Like, this is going to be a unique sound, family. This is, this is going to be like nothing our ears have ever heard before. My question is, have you surrendered to Jesus? Are you a follower of Jesus today? Because this is going to be really nasty, a nasty sound for people that don't know Christ. And it's going to be a beautiful sound for his followers. Let me say again, what are you getting Jesus for his birthday? He wants you. All right, this, this is, this is what, what follows. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. You heard a couple trumpets this morning. And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. He shall reign forever and ever. That's a really long time. When I was a little kid, I remember being unable to sleep. It's funny. I, the, the things you remember, I mean, I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but I can remember when I was this, this tall. And, and I, I went, went downstairs and I... My mom, she was working in her, her office, and I said, Mom, Mom, I don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> she looked up at me. <laughs> well, the alternative's not a whole lot better. Um, what are you thinking, son? And I said, Mom, I, I just don't want to go to heaven. I said, we're going to be there forever. And ever. And ever. Like, that's a really long time. And what are we, we going to do forever and ever and ever? I mean, 
forever? Have you ever thought about this? Like, how long forever is? I can't do it, folks. <laughs> like, I don't have space in my brain for, to understand forever. And I, I knew that the, the goal wasn't to play a harp on a cloud or whatever. But like, what are we going to do forever and ever? And then the next day and the next day and the next day. Mom, very wisely, she said to me, uh, what are we doing next week? And I said, oh, we're going on vacation. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing after that? Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to go to Grandpa's house. Yeah. What, what are She's like, I think heaven's just going to be like that. It's just, there's going to be, but it's going to be like one good thing after another. For you kids, it's going to be like, like one Christmas gift after another. Just, there's no end. Imagine the greatest thing in your life right now. Forever and ever and ever. And I know this may not sound all that appealing to some of you, but this idea of being in the presence of God and bringing him glory and honor and praises and worship and adoration forever and ever and ever is going to be like way better than the greatest rock concert or the greatest movie or the greatest experience you've ever had. It's just, there's going to be this massive celebration. It's a party that's never going to end. Does that sound good to anybody? Here's another description. Revelation says, On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I did not put this in all caps. This is the way it's actually written. The way it's translated from the original languages in all caps to to denote that this is significant, this is special, this is a name, this is, a, this, is, this is not normal. Jesus the Messiah is greater than any king, president, CEO, movie star, social media influencer, athlete, or author. He's greater than any angel, demon, and definitely greater than Satan. He's greater than any ideal, any political party. He's greater than communism, capitalism, He's greater than any religion. The Messiah is truly the goat, the greatest of all time. And he's returning soon. Are you ready? Now the most famous song in Handel's Messiah. It celebrates all this in lyrics and in music. So first, a really modern version Fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. Tone it down for you a little bit, for some of you. Oh, yeah, so much. This is my house. No, this is not my house. Hallelujah Chorus, and I noticed some of you stood even when the brass was playing earlier, which was kind of neat. Tradition says it's because King George II stood up during the song in, 17, in the 1743 London premiere. Many believe that he stood because he was just in awe. He was just so moved by the lyrics, by the music, that he stood up. And tradition is that whenever the king stands up, everybody stands up. So... 
today, on Jesus' birthday, we're going to conclude this service, this series, and our year the only way I know how. And that is to invite all of you to join me. And we're going to sing the Hallelujah Chorus. The lyrics are in your flyer. And if you're joining us online, this is for you too. Just stand up and make a joyful noise. Here we go. Christmas. God bless you. See you next year.